Hello and welcome back to a new video about automation. This time we're going to talk about architecture of process control systems. Uh, well, you know, this topic, architecture of process control systems, there are there are a huge amount of architectures. Of course, a lot of those process things, even also the big ones, yeah, they are sometimes just prototypes, yeah, and, and the architecture really is adapted to this situation. However, there are two major approaches, let's call them, yeah? and we're going to talk about those two major approaches. Yeah? One of these approaches is the one bus architecture. So there is one thing, one bus architecture. One bus architecture, there is one field bus, exactly one. Okay, so I would draw just this line. Can be physically different, can be a ring, uh, something like this. However, a bus system, I draw now just a line. Yeah? And at the line, there are all the different stations. And all of those different stations are connected to exactly this one bus. This is why the name is, right? <laughs> one bus system. There is one bus connecting all the different stations. Okay. If this is a, a Control station, uh, if this is a control station, for instance, control station, if this is an engineering station, or if this is a field control station, or whatever, uh, there might be different field control stations, there might be different control stations, uh, operating stations and so on and all are connected to the same bus all can com communicate to each other it's a big family the engineering station can access easily all of those yeah? this is the one bus architecture yeah? the big benefit is you know even if one station is failing yeah? regardless of which station there is still working, still operating, right? So the, the usability or the availability of the plant is rather high with this approach, with this one pass architecture. It, all stations are, are almost equal. So if one control station, yeah, I cannot access the system, I go to the next control station, that's it. Yeah? Due to the fact that we have one bus and also the communication between the, the field control stations are working across a, a, at this bus. Yeah? This might, you know, there is heavy load on the bus. That's the downside. Yeah? So, heavy load on the bus. Upside, high availability, good availability. Mm -hmm. One bus architecture. There are several examples of one bus architectures. Yeah, so there is, for instance, uh, the Delta V. Delta V systems. Uh, from uh, Emerson Electric and from ABB we have the Freelance uh, or from, from Yokogawa Centrum Centrum VP these are examples of this one bus architecture
Also, downside is, you know, usually you want, if you display here and here, yeah, the same value, the same measurement, yeah, it should be here and here, also at the same time changing. This is here not always, this is not easy yeah, to, to keep this, to keep this uh, value straight yeah, in the system. Yeah. Also, downloading of new recipes, uh, change change of views of the of the HMI and so on. Uh, th there are things which need to be overcome technically. Okay, so there is a, 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 quite a lot of effort keeping these things synchronous. And then, alternatively, there's the server architecture. A server architecture, we have one process server yeah, and this actually has commu can communicate with the field control stations over one bus system. Yeah. So here are the field control stations down here. Field control station. Field control station. That's it. Uh, that's enough. It's just because I have to place that there are more. Uh, he can also be more, of course. Eh? So there is the server. Eh? And on the other side of the server, yeah, I have a different bus system here. Eh? And at this different bus system, there are located the control stations, the engineering stations and so on. Eh? Control station maybe the engineering stations, yeah. maybe control, different control stations. So you see, there are simply two bus systems, which are interconnected by a server. Yeah. The server's task is to get all, all the information from the field control stations, yeah. summarize them, yeah. make one database, yeah. And this database is displayed then by the control stations. Yeah? So here I have no issue with data consistency yeah? because the server knows the server's data are consistent. In the other direction, the server is just mirroring the commands from the control stations to the field control stations. Okay? That's the big benefit. Yeah? And also the communication load is separated on two bus. Yeah? So the upside here, yeah, communication, is divided on two systems. So this heavy load on the bus is reduced. Okay. Here, data is always consistent. Data is always consistent. These are the upsides on the server architecture. Here, if the data consistent, if this is displaying the same like this, there is more effort inside. Yeah? We we'll also write this here, data consistency. And now, the big downside of the server architecture if those stations fail, then they fail. If also here the stations fail, then they fail. If the server fails, poo, yeah, then we're cut off. Yeah? Then this whole architecture is no longer working. Yeah? So, server failure 
causes complete control loss. This is actually the reason, you know, this is the, the, the big downset also of, of the centralized systems, why it got decentralized and so on, yeah? the servers. So here usually there are redundancy concepts. Yeah? So there are backup servers somewhere in the background and so on. Yeah, yeah. So here we have technical challenge. It's called like this with data consistency and heavy load. Here we have technical challenge in making the server high availability. These are the two things, the two approaches, server architecture, one bus architecture. Yeah. Examples of the server architecture is, for instance, PCS7 from Siemens. Okay. And uh, from ABB, there is the, how is it called, 800XA. Uh, this is examples for the server architecture. Yeah, that's ABB. This was here also. Yeah. Some companies do offer both. Yeah. Some companies have perfectized or uh, an excellence with one. And in the end, in the end, it's just it's just you know selecting. Yeah. The problems are solved. Yeah. And whatever is suitable, best suitable for your application shall be selected. Yeah? If you really fear that the bus is overwhelmed, then do this. And if you really fear that the server can, can block the whole thing, do this. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? Adapt to the application. Like always. Like always. Basic architecture type of process control systems. Next time we're going to talk about uh, the most important uh, things a control system must provide. Okay, what are what are the, the things a control system needs simply to have? Yeah? Ground rules. This then will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.